Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, introduction quickly. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and, I'm a, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. In fact, my client, one of my clients, calls me a guardian of the feminine, which sounds pretty cool too. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And even though they're from the masculine to the feminine, they do include most people in the conversation of relationships and romance and gender preferences as well. So today's topic actually is sort of one of those applies to all type focus. And by the way, I do this every day in Messages for the Masculine. And today's is number 391. So the countdown to 400 is getting closer. <laughs> So today's topic is um, trust your heart. It's a lot. It's a lot more accurate. A lot more smarter. I forgot what I wrote now. It's a lot. So I think I said it's a lot wiser than you think. That's what I think I said. And I want to speak about that, to that, and for that, so you understand what the benefits are of using your heart as a guidance system, because that's what it really is. And for most people, especially if you live in the Western world, our heart plays second fiddle to our mind and actually I'm going to play with the third level let's talk about this so head heart gut I'll cover all three because that seems to be the interweaving of the intelligence we carry innately within us we carry this wisdom below the neck that's more powerful than above the neck let's do it that way <laughs> so in an application to relationship I was going to do a little conversation about um, actually we came up talking, earlier was talking about talking about abuse but I want to speak about this because, in a way, this will actually include that in a sense that... Okay, now it's... Uh, sorry, I'm just seeing layers that is coming through. Hmm, how do we approach this? Hmm, this is going to be interesting. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Um, let me start with the overview that I was planning first, then go where this seems to be going afterwards, because it seems to be a double layer thing. So, first of all, um, I've mentioned about heart math before a few months ago in one of my Facebook lives and the, pa the fact that I've studied this that the power of our heart as the, as the electromagnetic power of our heart is magnitudes greater than the, the electromagnetic power of our mind our brain our brain has something like it will radiate about maybe a few inches outside of our head in terms of the radiant um, EMF field electromagnetic field actually I mean, electromagnetic field field that wouldn't work okay the EM field that's what I'm trying to say but our heart is several meters, so our heart's much more powerful than our mind, just in terms of electromagnetic force. At the same time, or at the same, or because of that um, energetic, when you meet other people, before you even shake hands with them, because that's inside that field. Now, let me just show this physically, somewhere on the screen, how to do this. If your radiant field is very small, like your brain, it's just about this far out. But with your heart being meters wide in this field array it's much much wider so when you meet somebody who comes inside your field walking inside your field that's a very bad <laughs> image but you understand what I mean like walking inside it it's not very you know stick figures doesn't do it then they basically walk into your resonance they walk into your ability to detect and sense what they're about and the thing about it is that most of us have learnt have been trained have been influenced to not trust that. So, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that piece in. You have experienced, I'm sure, time to time, where you're walking through some a building or a department store, or um, out in the street, and you walk past somebody, and you get this wave come over you, this feeling of, of either great delight or great disgust, because it can happen on extremes. And you may not have necessarily gotten a sense of what happened, but you may just felt something, just like, oh, that feels good. Not realizing what it is is your electromagnetic field, your heart's resonance is interacting with theirs, the other person. So there's this, this, this overlap. And when your overlap feels, you start to feel into who they are. And your ability to detect, detect's an interesting word to use, your ability to sense what other people are about is way stronger than you think. And in fact, if you started practicing this, which you can do very easily, and I may give you, I may provide a homework assignment because I do that every day on this particular topic. You're warned. <laughs> um, 
that when you do this, you actually get to a place where you can detect and sense where somebody else is before you even meet them. So before you shake hands, because again, your range of energetic reach with your heart is meters, as in 15, 20 feet. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what's coming. So, exactly, Lily, yes, vibes don't lie. So when you shake hands with somebody, they're going to be within about three, four feet from you. That's not very far. So that's within that several meet, that's 15 feet range, which means that when you shake hands with somebody, your heart's ray, radar is on full alert, picking up stuff from this person. Of course, the same thing's true for them. They're picking up from you. So understanding that you have these two interacting fields working together can work for you or against you. It's up to how you do it. Now, again, for many of us in the Western world, we've been trained to suppress it or ignore it or pretend it doesn't mean anything and go by the logic and the rules of the way the mind works. I think it's bullshit, personally, even though I've been trained that way, too. But when it comes to dating and relating, which is where this topic is meant to go, we have this ability, which we haven't tapped into as much as we could, but we can now, as a reminder to you, and some of you already do this, to get to know who somebody is before you even know who they are, in a sense. Like, you don't know their name or their story, but you can feel where they are and where they're not lined up, or where they are lined up. And that can be used as a very powerful detection method, detection again, to discern, define, and detect if this person is somebody who really lines up for you. Don't ignore that. I know of a few instances with clients and with friends, particularly through this bit of abuse to be something I was going to mention that came in earlier, that they had a hunch, an intuition, all the same thing. Um, I'd even say a gut feeling because I would say that the gut and the heart are very parallel, very, very much working together in the, in the wisdom side of things. That they felt before they entered a relationship that it was a wrong choice. They felt before they dated this person that it wasn't going to line up. But part of them did it anyway. And they ended up in a situation where they may have been hurt or abused or um, diminished by this other person because they didn't act upon what they originally felt. Now, in my, what reasons that chose they they chose that? Maybe because some things some things look good. Maybe it's because the, the physique of the person, or the financial well-being of the person, or the opportunity to go somewhere with that person, overrode their innate intuition that said, "Don't do it." Now, you may remember this yourself in your past experiences. You're still, it's true. You may have experienced this in your past experiences as well, and know this to be true. That was what I was trying to say the first time, but jumbled it up. So, recognize this. This is a tool that can be used, it doesn't cost you a penny, <laughs> but it's a powerful tool you can use in every area of life. At the grocery store, at the library, at work, at a sporting engagement, at your spiritual center. A for instance, just came up. I have been practicing and playing with this for a while now myself, and I'm very clear when I'm at my spiritual center, which is a place where it's much more open because there's a lot more loving people, and that's by the way, it's one of the things. When you're in places where the energy is more loving, your heart can be more open, but the temptation is a little is let it overwhelm us. It's like turning up the vibr turning up the volume so much that you don't notice the, the subtleties of what's not working. The, I'm gonna be careful I say this, so I'm just, just uh, watch myself as I do this. So the recognition about the fact that the heart is more um, when you're around other people where the loving is present, it's like your vibration, the harmonics increase because it runs in a loving space, which is wonderful. However, it's like that volume turn up can be challenging to remember your own connection to it because it becomes so overwhelming that bliss happens, overwhelm happens, euphoria happens, all these good things happen, which is great. When you're with somebody and people you know and trust already, great. But when you're in newer situations or in new groups where that happens, Keep your awareness about you. Keep your radar about you. I have had instances where I, I ran again around my spiritual center where I go on every Sunday. Hi, Michelle, nice to see you. Hello to you, you too. I've been in my spiritual center where I've actually, I mean, I've been going for 20 plus years and I've been very much in the joy and the euphoria and the feelings of being high. It happened there. At the same time, my, right, my radar, that intuitive sense is very strong. Partly because I've got a sense of being, um, well, as I said earlier in my introduction, people call me the guardian of the feminine. Some of my friends at Agape call me that too. Because I have this presence and way of being that is very protective for them, which is one of my gifts, one of my side effects of my work in a way. A complimentary one, that is. 
And so what I've had experiences of and that, and the, that places where my radar is like clanging inside of me, like that intuitive sense isn't just subtle. It's like bang, 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 bang. And I'm hearing this very loud, like awareness show up. I mean, you don't hear, I don't hear a clanging sound, but it's that feeling of just like, whoa, something's off. And it's, it's almost become a, a, a um, like a motion sensor, <laughs> a motion detector in a way. I pick up people when they're not lined up with energy, and it's one of those gifts that works for me, but at the same time, I can't always explain it, which is challenging, because some of us will go, no, they're fine, but I can feel something's off. And so that protection energy comes up inside of me to make sure that nothing happens, which can work for or against me. It can work for me because it's aligned to what my truth is. It can work against me because people may not be in alignment with that, and that's their choice. So I'm saying to you, be aware of the fact that when your heart is working, I should say when your when heart is working, it is working, it keeps you alive. When your heart's sensitivity is aligned so you pick up what's going on around you, you may be more sensitive than the other people, maybe more sensitive than other people are. In which case, be careful how you express that and share that in your communities and your friendships, because you may be saying things to people that they don't understand or agree with. And that can be kind of challenging just to be to be able to be a witness to that. So Make sure I cover the point. So here, here's the homework I was thinking about giving you, and you can take it if you wish to. Is start listening, because your heart's um, resonant frequency, your heart's radar, as it were, the heart's sensitivity is always going on. Even if you've been through heartful, painful situations, abuse situations, neglect these different things, your heart's still working. What's happened is the connection to your awareness has been disconnected, or has been shut down, or has been minimized, or strangled, and and limited. So your homework is to start listening again, start plugging in again, start becoming sensitive again to that inner feeling, because you can basically rebuild that connection very easily just by practicing it. So this is not, it's not hard to do, it's just a matter of doing it. So if you've been in a place where you've had a sense of um, disconnection, not feeling you can have it, not feeling you can do it, you can. So this homework is actually a practice building assignment which I invite you to do because it will give it will give you great skills it will give you great support and give you a skill that you can use in the future in all your connections relationships business dealings everything so again heart resonance is already working that's already happening it's already doing its thing if you're not connecting to it you're not feeling it then practice and practice simply is when you're around situations, just listen inside. Just stop saying things in here. Stop talking out there and stop talking in here. And just be quiet for a moment or two, for five minutes. Listen inside and you'll start to pick up sensitivities of what's happening around you. It's a really simple way of doing things and it works. But it does take practice because if you're out of practice, like any habit, it takes a few days to build up the momentum again. That sensitivity, that gift can guide you in every area of your life and especially when it comes to dating and relationships. So you want to make sure I tie it back to my work. So this is a bigger topic, obviously, and a bigger um, skill set than just in relationships. It happens in family dynamics. It happens in, I mean, frankly, if you're really good at it, <laughs> you can use it when you're even watching TV or watching movies. You can actually can feel into what's happening there too because, again, the heart's range, the heart's field is much bigger than you think it is. And the ability to use that for your good, to use it for your sensitivity to become aware of I need to do a PS. Okay, I need to add this piece. I'm going to say I missed this piece or didn't say this piece. As I said before, your heart's resonance, your heart's radar is already working. It's going. It's been going on forever since you were born, basically. But your connection to it may have, been, may have been severed or tied down or throttled. One thing to be aware of is that even though you may feel cautious around certain environments and want to shut down and pull in, your heart won't be affected. Now, this is going to sound really strange, I know. But I've become aware that when you have a, a radar of your heart, it's almost like, let me say this. I'm trying, I've got these things competing for attention, so bear with me trying to explain this. Heart awareness is not the same as open hearted vulnerability in the sense that you can protect yourself and take care of yourself and keep yourself well guarded, as it were, in environments that are unhealthy, but you can still use your heart as a radar system without affecting you. It's two different areas. Like your openness to let people in is different from your radar telling what's going on around you. I hope it's making sense. So that your ability to use your heart as a sensing system 
doesn't make anything weaker because of it and does not allow things to invade your space without your permission. I think that covers it. Does that make, if that's making sense, let me know. I'm not, I just want to make sure this idea does land for you because I know for some people they've been hurt so many times they're afraid of opening their heart. And I understand that totally and that's, again, in my work with my clients, a lot of that is to help them heal the heart so they can open it again. But the heart sensitivity is independent of that. And your heart sensitivity actually can protect your heart better than you think you can yourself. This again is the gift. As I mentioned earlier, the, the, that, that 15, 20 feet or whatever, that, 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 the re, that area of sensitivity out there in the world, is probably one of the best safe safety measures and um, guardianship tools you have for yourself. I'm not sure I'm making up words for this, but I'm trying to make it sort of get, makes the point. So what I want to make sure you get from this is here, trust your heart. And, and let me just cover two parts on this, because I'm going to give you two parts. I say trust your heart. Trust your heart for its own protection and security when you're in a place of vulnerability or relationship or connection or want to, don't want to be open to people. At the same time, trust your heart's awareness that's always going on, independent of your heart's being open or closed. Yes, it, this works this way. Having both of those things aligned, having both your awareness of your own heart, caring, compassion, desire to be loved, to share love, all these different things is one part. Having your radar working, call it heart radar if you want to call it that. I mean, I don't know the term. In, in heart math, they have terminology for this stuff, and I'm, I haven't studied with them, so I don't know all the terms. But when you have that awareness, it could keep you safe at the same time. So you have the power within you. In fact, you have the force. <laughs> to touch into the Star Wars for some for no reason. Um, I think that's it. You've got your homework, which I invite you to take on because it will change your life. Um, my work is around heart, obviously. My, my coaching, my support, my service, and my clients is around heartfelt support, helping them heal, helping them own their power. So if you want to practice, learn how to practice more and more, how to have that radar, I can help you with that. But more, more importantly for me, if your heart is wounded from past relationship, heartbreak, and pain and suffering from not having what you wanted, that's my speciality. So if you want some help in the area, reach out for your complimentary, my complimentary gift to you, which is my discovery session, I call it consult. If you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat, you can sign up there. Um, before we give you the other stuff, this Facebook Live number 391 is part of an ongoing series of talks that is also now going to be broadcast on my iTunes podcast in more catching up. So not only am I doing this um, to YouTube, which on my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, as well as on Facebook, um, the recordings go onto my business page, which is for Barry Selby, the author. I'm also now starting to slowly move them onto my podcast for the people who want to listen to my audio versions when they're driving, which my early ones may not be that good because they're very interactive, but these are less, these are more lecture type listening types, so they work pretty well that way too. Um, so that'll be out, that'll be, in, that'll be around soon. If you want to find out the link to that, you can send me a message, and I'll show you, send you the link for, the, for those. So it's already working me for my videos on YouTube, Facebook Live, podcast. Oh, and on my website, which is barryselby.com, there's a video blog where these live as well. Actually, I'll put a link to the podcast there at some point. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. Um, with that, I think you can get everything. Thanks for watching my broadcast, as always. If you have any questions, comments, please put them in the comments below, and I'll respond when I sign off. If you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them, and take this to heart. No pun intended. Your heart is a good guide system. It's only your disconnection from it that stops it from working. So get back in, plug in, use it, learn how to love, live, and be more aligned to who you really are. And you're very welcome. Thank you. And thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow with number 392. I have no idea what that topic's going to be, but it'll be fun, I'm sure. And uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.